Greetings in Jesus' name. My dear friends, I thank God for this wonderful opportunity to bring this word of a prayer for forgiveness to each one of us. God is a God who likes to cleanse us from things that ruin our relationship with Him. In order to remove those obstacles, He puts in our spirit a spirit of intercession, a spirit of forgiveness, a spirit to forgive people and to obtain our forgiveness from the Lord. The Bible says, we need to forgive each other and that we need to obtain our forgiveness from the Lord. You know this word, forgive, it's a two syllable word, for and given, for given. That means it's simply nothing but given for. That means someone does not earn it, you just, it's just given for them. That's what forgiven means. In this context, please stay with me as you understand what this word forgiveness brings to each and every one of us and how do we pray the prayer of forgiveness that we might let go any kind of envy or bitterness or anything in our heart nursing grudges or hatred towards people can be removed and how we ourselves can be released to our purposes in Christ Jesus. Hello, my dear friends. I'm so excited to bring you this word of a prayer for forgiveness. Dear brothers and sisters, it's very important that you understand the power of forgiveness. Forgiving is powerful. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength because forgiven means it is given for. That's exactly what Jesus did. You cannot give out of what you do not have. God gave his son that simply is a sign of forgiveness because he was trading holiness for sin of man he was trading flesh that we might be spirit filled have the spirit of god there's something to be god kind and there's something to be mankind god became man that mankind would receive the Spirit of God and we would live eternally in the Spirit. In order for us to understand the Spirit of God, in order for us to have a fully functional life of a believer on earth, we need to understand that we got to release ourselves from hurts, bitterness and envy. So I pray in the name of Jesus that anybody who is watching with me right now, going through a long term of resentment, bitterness, envy, jealousy, anger, lust, or any kind of thing, greed, anything that would stop us from having the purposes of God fulfilled in our lives, will right now be worked upon by the Holy Spirit of God. Father, we submit and surrender and yield ourselves that this word will work deep layer by layer and that we would totally be removed of any kind of offense in our lives in Jesus' name. My dear friends, offense is a trap of the enemy. When you try to defend yourself, bringing an offense to someone, that's the way the enemy tries to triumph over our lives. And he sees to it that he has a long time grudge that is nursed in our hearts. And that ultimately stops us from carrying the purpose of God. I want to tell you, there is a main character in the Bible who asks for forgiveness to the Lord. See, we all, the Bible says in Romans, for we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. When we sin, the glory that the Lord put on our lives gets diminished. 
it falls short it's not removed it falls short every time we sin we fall short of the glory the level of glory that the Lord has purposed for our lives to carry he puts a glory into a man he puts a glory into a child that is born the whole earth is full with the glory of the knowledge of God 2 Corinthians 4 6 says for he has called us out of darkness into light for Christ Jesus has shown into our hearts and has called us out from darkness into light so that the light of the knowledge of the glory of God the light of the knowledge of the glory of God there is a glory of God but we need light for the knowledge of the glory of God to understand the glory knowing the glory of God knowledge of the glory of God can only be obtained by the light so, so that the light of the knowledge of the glory of God may be displayed in the face of Jesus Christ. The face of Jesus Christ, in other words, is the knowledge of the glory of God. So if there is somebody who is encountering Jesus every day like David encountered, they cannot be without seeking forgiveness. And that's exactly what King David did. He was a shepherd. He was a leader. He was a king and he was a prophet and he was a priest, a fivefold ministry. Because through level to level, he journeyed with the Lord face to face. He was able to walk in the authority and the governance of the Lord because he had this important trait that all of us must cultivate, which is called forgiveness. The minute the prophet Nathan came and confronted him about his sin with Bathsheba, he cries out in Psalm chapter 51. You know what he says? Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. Look at this very word. What is background that I have given you as to why we should seek forgiveness? The minute the Spirit of the Lord is a torchlight within us, the Bible says the Spirit searches the deep things within us, which means He's a lamp. How? The Spirit of God cannot come to a shut door. The Spirit of God works in an open heart. The heart is open when the Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. David said, I've hidden your Word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Your laws are ever before me. Your testimonies are continually before me. I have sought your face and I will continue to seek you eternally. He made Jesus the dwelling place. And he was forever asking forgiveness and reconciling with the Lord minute to minute. And you know what happens? He says, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgression. Lord, I know that your compassion never fails. According to your great transgression, According to your great compassion, blot out my transgression. Your compassion, my transgression, can only come to a balance when there's something called forgiveness that is released. He was claiming the forgiveness of God. Rather, he was begging, he was seeking, he was asking the forgiveness of the Lord. My transgression, Lord, your compassion, please, Send forth your forgiveness. And then in verse 2, he says, Wash away all my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. In other words, he said, you know, in verse 7, Cleanse me. How do you cleanse me? He even tells God, Cleanse me with his hop. It's okay, Lord, if you want to give me a bitterness in my life, and that should cleanse me. That's what he meant by his hop. His hop was offered to Jesus as a bitter drink. You know, dipped with you know the hyssop bunch which was dimmed in wine mixed with vinegar was given to Jesus hyssop signifies symbolizes bitterness in life he says cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean wash me and I will be whiter than snow here he says wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin there is something called cleansing there is something called washing Cleansing removes impurities. Washing blots out things. God needs purity and holiness. The whole book of Psalm 51 says about cleansing and washing. 
removing impurities and making us holy and making us as white as snow, which means impeccable, perfect in the presence of the Lord, which only the Lord can do because we cannot do. We are yielded vessels and the yield is Jesus Christ himself. For I know my transgression. He said, I know I have sinned for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. He kept talking about my transgression, my sin. I am a sinner. My dear friends, let us come out of all kinds of obscurity and all kinds of things that prevents us false knowledge about ourselves or self-righteousness that tells us that someone else is wrong and we are not wrong. In a case where someone has an offense against us, it is really, really essential that as a believer, we set the record straight. If you know that someone has mistaken you or misunderstood you, the Bible says, go and reconcile, make terms easier and comfortable because the Bible says in the book of Peter, seek peace and unity among brethren. As far as possible, try to live with peace among all brethren. Let there be unity in the body of Christ. If there's a misunderstanding, God wants us to reconcile, seek forgiveness. Forgiveness comes out of love, which is very powerful. That's why he says, Lord, my transgression, your compassion. He says, wash me, cleanse me. Because against you, he didn't stop with that. You only have I sinned. He's not bothered about any other human being. He said, Lord, against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Father, you are right in calling me a sinner because I have sinned with Bathsheba. And there is Nathan, this prophet who has come and confronted me. I bow down before you, Lord. Wash me. Don't throw me away. Don't make me guilty of blood. Father, I have sinned. I have done the mistake. I know if you judge me, I am judged. I'm not innocent. I'm guilty. There's a difference between people saying, only this one time I have done that. It's not me. There are many other sinners whose sins are greater than me. He didn't justify. He said, Lord, you are justified when you are judged. He called God as the righteous judge. And then surely I was sinful at birth, right from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. These were all the verses of cleansing. Now, from 8 onwards, let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. I tell you something. The reason why we need to seek forgiveness from the Lord is sin not only brings guilt. Now, the first seven verses talks about God removing him from guilt. His prayer, David's prayer to be removed of offense and guilt to the Lord. So he's convicted of the sin. He knows fully well that he's a sinner and he asks God to remove sin from him. The next few verses are, Father, because of my sin, the bones you have crushed. Sin can lead to sickness. Sin can lead to shame. Therefore, first thing he, he talks, he confronts sin. He asks for a cleansing from sin. The enemy is defeated when you seek forgiveness from the Lord. The enemy is defeated. When you sense that someone is offended through you and start reconciling with them, Every major purpose and plot of the enemy to defeat you with offense will be defeated. And then he says, let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart. He talks about bones. Then he talks about a heart. You know, he says, create in me a pure heart of God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me out from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Then he's afraid of the Holy Spirit and the presence of the Lord, the bones and the heart, the organs of the body to function well and not to be hurt because of the sin. And then he says, Father God, do not take away your Holy Spirit and your presence. One great reason why we need to pray for forgiveness is that the Holy Spirit, we saw how 
the spirit of the Lord departed from Samson. How the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. How the spirit of the Lord was grieved through many people. The one and only thing that you and I can live for is to always live under the supremacy, the sovereignty, the rule and the reign of the Holy Spirit of God. Because the Holy Spirit should not be grieved. The Holy Spirit is Lord over all the earth and the heavens. The Holy Spirit confronts sin when he comes into a place. His seeking forgiveness itself was a great sign of the presence of the Holy Ghost within him. And then he says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Spirit, presence, salvation. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Grant me a willing spirit to sustain me because now I'm guilty. Then I will teach. Then he says, what I will do when I'm confronted is, when I'm forgiven is, I will teach transgressors your ways. When people sin, I will tell them that I have a loving God so that sinners will turn back to you. He says, I will lead many sinners back to you because you have forgiven me i will tell them that god is a god who is loving merciful compassionate slow to anger and rich in love which is why he wrote so many psalms and even in the book of psalm you know 130 it says out of the depths i cry to you lord hear my voice let your ears be attentive to my cry if you lord kept a record of sins lord who could stand but with you there is forgiveness so that we can with reverence serve you because God has forgiveness with him we are able to be his servants otherwise there would be if God kept a record of sins no one would stand but God says repent from sins that doesn't mean we would be sinners and we would be keep on sinning because we are human beings God says repentance brings much fruit there is a joy that comes through repentance and restoration Repentance brings restoration. The restoration brings revival. God wants us to. And when you're revived, you rule and reign with Christ Jesus, the just and the most righteous one, the holy one, the sovereign one, the eternal one. And it says, but with you there is forgiveness so that we with reverence serve you. And then coming back to Psalm 51. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. You know, it says, we come here so that sinners would come back to you. Lord, we can pray because with you there is forgiveness. I will teach transgressors your ways. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. Now it gets a little intense. He's really thinking about that act of adultery. He says, deliver me from bloodshed. You who are God, my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. And then he talks about his tongue, how he wants to praise God. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice. What can I do, Lord? I'm a human being. You do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offering. My sacrifice now, O oh God, is a broken spirit because I'm broken in my spirit because I need forgiveness. I'm at a state where I need to be offered forgiveness. A broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. If I come to you with an offering, like you loved Abel's and accepted Abel's offering and you rejected Cain, there could be reasons where you could reject burnt offerings and sacrifices. But I know that you will never reject a broken spirit. I'd like to meet with you here, my dear brother and my sister, and tell you, if you are broken in your life, in your spirit because of a sin, God wants to tell you, David approached God and said, Lord, my spirit is broken. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. You can also ask the Lord, go near God. He is your father. David pleaded, Lord, you are compassionate and I am filled with transgressions then when you forgive me I will teach transgressors your ways and then in Psalm 130 he says if you O Lord kept a record of sins who can stand our God is a faithful God he rejects sin but he accepts the sinner and the Bible says if anyone sins let him confess with his mouth about his sin and the Lord 
is faithful to receive the sinners and reconcile them to his heart. If you sin, God really wants us to confess and be convicted through the Holy Spirit. And then it says, you do not delight in sacrifices. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despair. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous, in burnt offerings offered whole. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. When I'm forgiven, when my sins are forgiven, when my shame is taken away, then when you build up Zion, he meant David, the city of David in Zion. When you build up Zion, when you build up her walls, that means he meant, lo, when you build me up, when you build Zion, then when we bring the sacrifices to you, you would accept it. And this is how he closes the book, the chapter of Psalm 51, seeking forgiveness from the Lord. Just like David said, you know, God answered his prayers. There in Israel is the city of David. Jesus Christ was born in the city of David, the most holy one. God, of course, did not allow David to build him a temple, but his son Solomon succeeded in building the temple. God said, talked about his former glory and his future glory of the temple. And that's what all of us are looking forward to. There's the city of David in Israel. God accepted David. He forgave David. David lived his purposes on this earth, just like David did. Also in this dynasty, Jesus is born. Jesus taught us how to pray when he was on the cross. He clearly said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Forgiving others, asking forgiveness to the Lord. Forgiveness brings clarity in relationships. Forgiveness brings clarity of thoughts. Forgiveness propels the purpose of God. Forgiveness allows God to be God in your life. Forgiveness gives control for the Holy Spirit to move. For in Him, you move, you live and have your being. And Jesus also said in the Lord's Prayer, He taught us, Forgive us as we forgive them that trespass against us. Forgive us our sins as we forgive them that trespass against us. That means that transgress against us. Forgiveness is a very important part of our prayer. A prayer for forgiveness will redeem us from Satan's plot of unforgiveness and offense. Offense can immediately defend us but that's the weakest form of defense that we are building to ourselves. Lack of forgiveness is a weak spiritual system. It's a weak believer. It's a sign of a weak believer. May we always overcome in forgiving people, in letting go of things that have hurt us. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray according to David and his prayer recorded in the book of Psalm 51 that you will cleanse us, that you will wash us, and that we will be clean, and that we will be redeemed from the miry clay. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful opportunity to reconcile with our family members, with our friends, long-term grudges and hatred and rivalry to all leave right now in Jesus' name. Clothe us with your glory, Lord. Let us not fall short of the glory of God because of unforgiveness. We yield ourselves in Jesus' name. We ask this prayer. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.